Good afternoon, this is Lynx. I'm doing a video here on a subject that I have hesitated discussing for a very long time, but it is one that continually comes up in readings while I'm doing readings for people and when people ask me to do readings for them. It is the guide, spirit guide, masters question. There was a lot of um, stuff written about this subject um, in the 60s and on in the New Age movement about guides relating to people and spirit guides and even if you go back to the 1910-1920s uh, stuff about psychic fortune tellers, mediums, um, 40s and 50s people were doing mediumism in which they were uh, talking to people's relatives who had passed. It's a very, very popular subject right now. And there's a couple of things I'd like to say about it quickly, just to put it on the record now and to see if I can sort of clear things up in how I approach this and my experience, my experience with it, uh, as an individual who has been um, trained in a tradition that has a lot to do with spirits. Um, in the Tibetan Ban um, stuff, we do deal with spirits, and very early on in my training, I had extensive training in dealing with spirits in cemeteries and in um, areas that were haunted, things like that. So my stance is that it's not that I am against or I don't believe in spirits and or ghosts. I think that people have gotten too one-sided about it and too simplistic about it. And that there is this belief that when you die, you're kissed on the forehead and everything on the other side is good. And nothing in nature, if you think about it, works that way. There are, you know, there are jungles that, where, that, that the energy in there wants to kill you. And then there are English gardens that are lovely, but you could still get stung by a hornet. Nothing is completely benign or good. Nothing is completely evil. There's always a balance of these things. And I made some notes here with my cards um, so I could keep on track here. Um, I would like to say that there are uh, as many as many benevolent beings that are out there that could help us. And from my own experience, I will say there are, there are beings out there that will help you, you know. You can walk through a forest and, and, and find some sort of discarnate being that will help you. There are uh, ghosts that hang around that do try to help people, though if you pay attention and you have experience, you can see that some of those ghosts are limited in their capabilities. Uh, some not so much. Um, you walk through any cemetery and you will find quite a few different classes of being. At the same time, an individual could go walking in the woods, uh, walking in, the, in, in um, the mountains, step in the wrong place and end up with seizures. And I've actually had clients who've had this happen, where they actually suddenly had seizures. They didn't know why they were suddenly having seizures and I said, you were in the mountains about six months ago, weren't you? And they said, yes, how did you know? There is a class of being, and if you research the Tibetan uh, gods and demons in Tibet, is, is a, I mean, this is something you can, you can Google and buy, uh, classifies types of, be types of beings uh, that you could run across, and there are beings that can curse as well as help. So um, where I am not one to believe that everyone is cursed by a supernatural being, I am also not one to believe that anyone, everyone is helped by a supernatural being. Um, I do also do not believe, nor in my experience, do I advocate that just because it's dead that it's suddenly benevolent and all-knowing. Also, if a being that you think is something that you uh, knew when it was alive, and it does not behave the same way that the being did when you were alive, or when it was alive, then you should be aware that there are quite a few beings out there that can pretend to be anything they want. 
There are also things that claim to be guides that, uh, or family members that will tell you exactly what you want to hear and feed on the result. Um, also, the idea of the, the, the being on each shoulder that helps you, you know, you got one on each shoulder that, that advises you is, is, a, is, a true, is a truism in, in the training, in the, in the old Tibetan bond training, that you actually do have guides. There are family lineage guides. Uh, when one turns on a family, they, they need to be very careful because the family lineage guides. Those of us who study in a tradition with a master, and it's an old tradition, have lineage guides and lineage defenders who actually defend those who are studying that lineage. Depending upon the power of that lineage determines the nature of the beings. I think these days uh, the tricky part is that people are willing only to accept that there are these certain kinds of guides out there, that it's, it's a certain class of being that they've determined is good, and that's the only thing that can help you. Traditionally, one could be helped by demons as well as something that was seen as more benevolent. Demons were looked as, as a class of beings that came here to clean things up when there was a mess and gods were looked as a being that was more creative. So the demon was a destructive thing, a god was a creative thing. If a demon came along to help, it was probably because something needed to be destroyed to make way for something new. If a god was helping, it was because something was being brought into being. There is a legend that many of the old gods have been imprisoned by a Bangku or a Buddha who punished them for abandoning humanity. And I'm just gonna leave that one there and not really argue about it. It is, it is a legend and if you pay attention you might see and, and really look at what's going on in the world and how the world really feels. It sort of feels like it's been somewhat abandoned or at least that the beings out there, that the nature beings, the nature spirits, the nature guides are at least very, very sick because of what we've done in this space. There are beings that feed on depression, there are beings that feed on happiness, there are beings that feed on lust and gluttony, there are beings that want you to be lazy, there are beings that want you to lose sight of your goals, there are beings that want you to reach your goals, and there are beings that want you to prosper and succeed. And as it was put to me one time by my master, if you were a god and you were helping a human, or, or a human was asking you and the human was likely to give up, would you want to help that individual or would you want to go and help a being that was more determined to make a difference in the world, to help the world, to heal the world, to give a space that other people could prosper from? I think the biggest problem with this guide question is that people get into the idea that there's a certain kind of being out there that's willing to act as a genie and handle their shopping list. So someone will say, I want this, 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 and this. I ask my guides and masters to make it so for the good of everyone, and really it's an excuse to be greedy rather than to actually use your talents and gifts in a way that cultivates them and uses them in a way to really heal this planet and, and, and humanity and make humans great. Um, just in summing up, it may not be as black and white as you think it is. And if you suspect that I'm not saying everything I know about it, it is, it is true, I am not. I do have, as I said, experience working directly with this stuff. And my understanding of it, through my experience, is it is much different than the popular books would like us to imagine. In my experience, the dead relative is not always hanging around, and quite often it is someone who claims to be the relative that is not, and sometimes it is the actual relative, and they are actually living around the house, and they are a ghost. Um, but does it fit the traditional Catholic or Christian view of a, a god and angels and a hierarchy, or the New Age view of a god and an angel and, and a heaven afterwards? Well, that's a relatively new concept, if you think about it. And there are much older traditions that go back thousands and thousands and thousands of years, which have repeatedly proven in their lineage 
and in their training of students that that is not necessarily the way that it goes. And that uh, things like the Tibetan Book of the Dead show people uh, what happens in the death process and what happens after you die. That said, we do find assistance from all over and sometimes in the most unlikely places. My purpose for doing this video is to assure people that we are never alone and that there is as much out there that is invisible and unseen and in the spirit world probably more so than what is actually physical. But when it becomes a problem is when we use it as an excuse to expect the spirit world to do everything for us rather than for us to actually pick up the item and move it rather than expecting something that is discarnate or spirit to do it for us. Can you determine what that looks like in the cards? Sure, you could design something to tell people what sort of assistance they have. But when you're looking for your, your guide stuff, remember this. Sometimes that person that's right next to you that's working their hardest to make your life easier is your guide, is your helper, is your whatever. And sometimes the energy that you need is opposite of the energy that you think you need. I'm going to say one more thing on that subject and something that I've never really stated in these public things. Uh, I was very, very much for a long time, I did trans channel for people and I'm still capable of doing it, but I don't do it for many reasons right now because my experience of what's going on in the world right now is not conducive to the best things happening when one trans channels. Um, I don't believe that there are the best beings out there that want the best for us right now and there are lots of things that like to come through and lie. There are some things that come through and tell the truth. I ran a gallery for a while, a psychic gallery, and one year at Christmas time I did a trans channeling for all my clients from the year who came in in the gallery and I channeled for them all. A particular being came through that I was used to channeling and for some reason came out of my mouth as saying his name was Saint Michael. I had no idea why because he wasn't. He absolutely wasn't and I knew he wasn't but he said his name was Saint Michael and afterwards after I was done I I wondered why the hell that happened and one of the people came up to me and she said that was so amazing all the way over here I was afraid wondering what I would do if something came that wasn't an angel or wasn't good so at that moment I was very aware that these beings in the other world are sometimes tricky and sometimes present things in a way to get people to listen, though it may not be the truth the individual thinks it is. So, there is no such thing as only good, only bad. There is no such thing as all white, all black. Things are usually a balance. For everything there is creative, there is destructive. If you think that you only have these good, good guides out there, these masters that are working hard to make sure that you get the kind of car that you want, or the kind of home in the right neighborhood that you want, you're probably in the long run, in the long run, going to be disappointed in what you get out of all of it. However, there are forces out there that will help you if you ask them for it. But be aware, for every bit of assistance you get, you are making a contract in some way. And that being gets something from it. And if you know how to make your contracts, and you know how to exchange the energy, then you're fine. But if you don't, you might want to talk to someone who does know how those things work. If you're interested in scheduling a reading with me to learn more about the assistance that you may have going on for you, go ahead and text me or call me 779-302-8009. Did I just forget my own phone number? 779 302-8009, right? I just, I'm asking my partner, I just forgot my own phone number. And the other, uh, my Conjure Hope, conjurehope at gmail.com is my email if you want to email me. I'm Lucky Links, as always, wishing you success and good fortune. If you have any questions, as always, put them in the thing below and I will do my best to answer them. And uh, if you have a question about what's helping you, what's assisting you, go ahead and schedule a reading and we'll find out.